Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing great. I'm so excited to start this week off and we're gonna be starting something a little bit new this week. So we are gonna be jumping into module six for math. So we're not quite done with module five and fractions, but we thought it would be a good idea to take all of the things that you've learned already about fractions and use those to apply them to decimals. So when we return to fractions and we start doing more complex things, you will have a little bit more background on why these fractions are working and a little bit more background on how these fractions work. So we're hoping that that will actually help you in that later work. So I wanted to give you a quick little introduction on what decimals are and what to expect as we kind of go on this little bit of a shortcut back into fractions, okay? So if you guys look at this chart here, we have some decimals on the top. So we have three tenths, 17 ten thousandths, 487 hundredths, and 321 thousandths. So all of these have something in common. So when we look at these and we try to break them down and compare these fractions, we notice, okay, they all have a number in the numerator and they all have a number in the denominator. I'm noticing the sizes of the fractions are a little bit different. Some of them are larger than the others based on how many fractional units they're split into, right? A tenth is going to be a lot larger than a ten thousandth. Um, and now that I'm kind of noticing those denominators, one other thing that I'm noticing is that all of these denominators are products of 10, right? So we have 10, 10,000, 100, 1,000. These all connect really heavily to the place value charts we've been working with, right? Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands hundred thousands and so on. So that place value chart is going to play a huge role as we start working to convert these fractions into decimals. So these are actually what we would call decimal fractions. These are fractions that because their denominator is a product of 10 can be converted into a decimal. So because all of these denominators have the ones and zeros kind of, we can make these into decimals. So how do we make these fractions into a decimal number. Let's take a minute and talk about that. So the reason why the word decimal is so heavily connected to that concept of it has to be a product of a 10, either a 10, 100,000, 100,000 and so on, is because of that prefix des. So you'll notice that there's a lot of words that start with that dec and that's because it means 10. So think about the word decade, right? Decade is spelled d-e-c-a-d-e. -E. The dec at the beginning helps us understand that a decade has something to do with 10. And in this case, it would be 10 years. So we want to make sure that we're keeping in mind it has to be something that connects to that 10 in order to turn these fractions into decimals. So, whoa. welcome back. <laughs> As we look at some of these fractions from above down here, we have three tenths. So I rewrote three tenths here because I want to acknowledge how many tens does it take to make the product of 10 that I have in this denominator. So in this case, it only takes one 10 to get a 10. I don't have to break it down in any other format to get it to a 10. So the numerator tells you a lot about what your decimal is. You have to place those numbers in the correct place on your decimal fraction. So when we say 3 tenths, that's actually going to be the same as saying 0 0.3. This point kind of is an indicator to us, it's a mark to us that we're on the other side of the place value chart now. And as we work on the other side of the place value chart, we work backwards from tenths. So this spot where the zero B would be ones, one whole. So you'll see we have a place value chart right here as well. So when I say three tenths, I would put a three here to represent that I have three in the tenth place value spot. Now, it can get a little bit trickier as our numbers get larger. So if we take a look here, we have 17 ten thousandths, okay? We're getting a lot larger in these denominators here. So when we think about a ten thousandth, I want to figure out how many place values am I going to be going on after the decimal? Where am I going to place that 17? Because it might not be right in the tenths place, and we have to remember that. So when I think about a ten thousandth, I can break that into 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. By breaking it down into those tens, that's indicating and showing me each place value chart because we know that as we move place value charts to the over, 
the way that we have been doing it, it's 10 times more. When we're working with decimals, we're gonna do 10 times less. So when I think of a 10,000th, I need to go 10 times less. So I'm dividing by 10, one, two, three, four, all the way to the 10,000th place. So when I think about 17 10 thousandths, I need to place that 17 in that specific area. So even looking at my place value chart on the bottom, my seven is gonna go all the way down here. Then I have my one. Then I have no hundredths and no tenths. I need to make sure that I'm going all the way down to that place value to let the people that are looking at this know that I understand that I had to go over four places to show that 10,000th. So when we look at our next one, 487 hundredths. This is another place where this work can get tricky and we have to be careful and make sure that we're looking at our decimals carefully. You'll notice on this one, 487 is greater than a hundredth. Our numerator is larger than our denominator. So we can still do those same steps. We know that 100 is equivalent to 10 times 10, meaning we have to work two decimal places after our decimal here after our ones place. So take a look at how I have here, 487. I have seven hundredths, eight tenths, and four ones. We know that when we work with fractions, a fraction is part of a number. It's not always gonna be a whole number. And in this case, this fraction could be turned into a mixed number as well, and four eighty-seventh one hundredths, four and eighty-seven hundredths, right? So that would be the same as 4.87. So we wanna kinda of start making these connections that decimals and fractions actually work very closely together when we have this denominator that is a product of 10. So when we think to the thousandth, we can see that that same process is going to follow. So we know 1,000 is equivalent to 10 times 10 times 10. That's why we have those three zeros coming on after that. We have that 321 that we need to place after the decimal point. Being careful, I'm knowing, okay, 321 is not greater than that 1,000 it takes to make a hole, so I have no holes. And I'm placing all of my numbers after the decimal point. I have three marks that I need to place my number, and it all fits after that decimal point to show that 321 thousandths is equivalent to 0.321 ten thousandths. So, when we're working with place value, we need to remember that we're really connecting it to the place value chart. We're going to go slow with this and we're going to take it easy and we're going to talk about how we can break down these holes into these decimals. But I want you to remember that fractions play a role in this and you guys have a lot of background that's going to help you with this. So as we move through, please ask me questions. We'll go over some work together too and hopefully it will be a great experience. I'll see you guys later. Bye.